Glad we're in a new month. I uh, last month my uh, my girlfriend broke up with me. Uh, no, it's actually awesome. Uh, my friends are taking me out all the time. Uh, I am actually from an all-black neighborhood. I love it. Uh, it's great. No, I'm not. I grew up in an all-black neighborhood. All my friends are black, and they bring me to hip-hop clubs. I should never be in a hip-hop club. I uh, just. <laughs> Right out there. People go to me, you're not afraid to go to a hip-hop club? Listen, I've been jumped so much, I don't even call it jumping anymore. I call it donations to the hood. And uh, <laughs> you get to write it off in your taxes, so it works out. But, uh, but I went to a club with my friend Reggie, right? He called me up. He's like, let's go out. We get to the club. First, first thing off the bat, Reggie buys $800 worth of champagne. Second of all, Reggie works at CVS full time. So... <laughs> Third of all, Reggie isn't drinking the champagne, he's spraying it on the dirty girls. All right? Yeah. I look at him, I'm like, Re Reggie, what are you doing? That's $800 worth of champagne. He looks right back at me and goes, Ricky, girls like it when you spray them with the expensive stuff. Which must be a m misconception, because I was on a date yesterday, and I brought the girl to the gas station, and I sprayed her down with diesel fuel for a half hour. She was like, oh, why are you doing that? I was like, because I'm a baller. That's 405 a gallon. Now dance for me. <laughs> dance. <laughs> and uh, I do stuff like that. I, I, listen, I'm a bad drinker, and that's why I do things like that. I'll tell you right now. I'm a bad drinker. I know this because I, I'm the kind of drinker that gets drunk at like 3 o'clock in the afternoon, walk into Barnes & Nobles, and puts all the Bibles in the fiction section. <laughs> So, where it belongs, right next to that Sarah Palin book, let's really talk, no, no. But uh, my ex-girlfriend, she, uh, she had a kid. She was, it was a baby. Um, I didn't like it. I don't like babies, and I'll tell you why, seriously. Uh, babies aren't fun. They're not, and if you think they are, you're a liar, because you've never been to a party and somebody went, this party would be better if a baby was here. <laughs> And if your friend has said that, you need new friends. Uh, but yeah, she had a kid, and uh, his name was Sam, and he, he always used to get me in trouble. He was three years old, and this one time, my girlfriend called me up. She was like, hey, Ricky, can you watch Sam? I got to go to work. I was in the shower when I took this call, so I said, no problem. But after I shower, I powder myself. It makes me more ninja-like. Don't judge me. All right? <laughs> So I powder myself, I get in the car, I drive over. Sam, three years old, ran across the room to give me a hug and he hit me in the pants and the powder came out like <laughs> And it got in his mouth so he was like <laughs> And he was trying to cry but he couldn't because the powder absorbed the tears. And my ex-girlfriend runs in the room, she goes, what is that, anthrax? Yes, surprise, surprise, I joined Al-Qaeda, and I am the worst terrorist you will ever meet. What, am I chilling with my terrorist friends later that night? Like, dude, what you do? Oh, I blew up a bus, that's cool. I gave a baby cod in mouth, take it or leave it. Uh, what was cool about my girlfriend? She would come on the road with me, and uh, I liked that. And one thing she used to do, uh, she used to like to go out when we were on the road, and this one time we went to a museum. And I don't really learn much when I go to these things, but I did learn the whole time I was there back in the Stone Age, she used to use rocks as currency. And in my head, I was like, wow, being a stripper back in the Stone Age had to be the most dangerous job ever. <laughs> Imagine that, guys getting excited and start throwing rocks across the room, come on. I would hate for a rapper Stone Age to make it rain on me. <laughs> that was for that side of the room. We also went shopping and like, listen, I wear like, this is what I wear. And my girlfriend always liked to like pick clothes out for me. And this one time she came back and she had a, a two Ed Hardy shirts in her hand. Now, if you don't know what an Ed Hardy shirt is, take the ugliest shirt you own and glitter and bedazzle it. <laughs> and now it's more expensive. So. But I don't, under no, I don't understand these shirts because they are the ugliest things that you can possibly find and they go from like 100 to $200, right? Listen, I can just buy a white t-shirt and write loser across it myself. 
same thing will be portrayed. <laughs> but uh, I have one rule in my car, and it always used to be a problem when I was on the road with her. It's if you drive, you get to pick the music, which is fair. Fair? Yeah? No, it's not, because she listens to the Jonas Brothers, okay? An hour and a half of the Jonas Brothers can kill a man. Halfway through, I was like, sweetheart, they suck. Can we listen to something else? This was her response. They suck, Ricky? They're rock stars. You're just a comedian. Rock stars? Come on. I don't mean to be a mean person, but one of them's a diabetic. Rock stars don't overdo... <laughs> Whoa, 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 rock, star, rock stars overdose on meth and cocaine, not Oreos and sugar cookies, okay? <laughs> Suck on that, Nick Jonas, it's sugar free. But, <laughs> but uh, I did recently quit doing a smoking pot. Thank you. Uh, the drug dealers over here are really upset about that, did you? <laughs> You are the worst people ever. But I, uh, I quit smoking pot, which I'm very proud of. It's, it's, it, was, it was huge. But uh, if you guys are in town and you are going to smoke, don't do it in Times Square, okay? There's a lot of lights and a lot of people asking you things. And uh, the reason I quit was I, uh, I come to the city every day and I get up to stoplights and I'm like, wow, green is my favorite color. <laughs> No, red's my favorite color. And this goes on for an hour and a half, and I don't even drive to the city. I'm just standing in the middle of the road, and people don't enjoy that. But uh, don't do it in Times Square, because last time I was high in Times Square, this guy comes up to me, and he's like, come to the world of Scientology. And I was like, dude, get out of my face. But he's, I must have looked really high, because he goes, we have food, so I went with him. But I did quit smoking, and I want to say before I leave, it, it had nothing to do with these anti-drug commercials we have out. If you guys haven't seen them, they're terrible. Uh, there's this new one out, this kid, he's lying on a bed. He's like, dude, I got so stoned last night, called my ex-girlfriend 27 times and told her I loved her. I've been high, that never happens. <laughs> I've called Domino's 27 times, <laughs> confessed my love to Cheesy Bread. I'm Ricky Velez, you guys have been an audience, thank you.